Um, I am now going to mute myself and turn it over to Miss Danielle. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, tonight we're going to talk about letter writing. And this is kind of just a very general overview. Um, I'm not going to talk about specific types of letters. Um, I know probably a lot of y'all are thinking about cover letters for resumes or college applications. Um, those are very specific. And so I just want to talk more about letter writing in general. Um, I'm going to start by uh, comparing letters and emails, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, why do we need to even write letters? Everybody sends emails. Well, email is electronic mail. It's letters, just like paper letters that you would, you would send in the mail. So I want to show you guys two letters. Let's see if I can manage this. Um, I want to share two letters with y'all um, and uh, side by side so y'all can see them. Um, can y'all see my screen? Okay, so here I have on the one side, I have an email, right? Right here, it's obviously um, an email. And over here, I have a typed letter. I will tell you that I did not send this typed letter. I just sent the email, but I want to show you how they're the same. So a, a letter has some basic formatting. Um, we have a, um, a greeting. Here it says, good morning, Mrs. Pricer. And over here it says, good morning, Mrs. Pricer. So both have that greeting. Um, both have the body of the email, have a body of text. So here's our body of text body of text. And we'll talk a little bit more about the, that body text in just a minute, because that that is the most important part of the letter. Um, the other thing we have is we have a closing. Sincerely, Danielle Jones. Sincerely, Danielle Jones. There you go. So it's basically the same. Now, there are some other things you'll notice on this, uh, on this Google Doc letter that are more formal formatting. My name is here with address and contact information. Now, all of that contact information isn't in this email, but if you look right here, my name and contact information are right there. Now, I could have chosen to put at the bottom of this email um, additional contact information, but it was sufficient that my email was there for this. And then here also we have Mrs. Pricer's information, the name of, um, the name of the company she's with, Rise Up Cooperative, and their contact information. We have all of that here as well. Office at riseupcooperative.org. It's all, all contained in that, in that piece. And then we have the date. That's here and that's here. So even though we think of these things as being very different and very separate and having very different rules, they are very much alike. So that's the comparison there of letters and emails. So the things that I'm going over with you tonight, I hope that you will um, see that you can apply to both things that you email and things that you might choose to actually type or handwrite a letter to send. All right. Now let's see what's next. So I want to talk a little bit about the basic outline of a letter. And to do that, I'm going to show you uh, this letter right here again. Can y'all see that letter? Okay. So we have some basic things here. Let's see if I can, did that get bigger for y'all? Okay. So we have a greeting, the body, and the closing. So the greeting, a general greeting. Hello, dear Mr. or Mrs., good morning, to whom it may concern. You can find um, whole lists of, of that. Um, and I'll touch back on that in one second because I want to show you a resource for that. And then your body. There are three parts to the body of any letter. And they will be used in different ways, 
but they're the same three basic pieces of the body. You have your reason for writing, your action that you're requesting, and a closing statement, which can be a summation, a restatement, or just a general compliment. Um, here, I tell her, I, I want to finalize plans for Tuesday's workshop on letter writing. So I state right away, I don't have to worry about making small talk. I don't have to worry about asking about the weather. You can just say, I'm writing because I want to apply for this job. I'm writing to say thank you. I'm writing to, to inquire about the price of your, your product. I'm writing to tell you that your product was horrible. I'm writing to tell you that your product is my favorite product ever. So that's the very first thing, why you're writing. Um, you can also think of that kind of as like if you're sending an email, your subject line, right? A restatement of your subject line. And then you have your action. So I tell her exactly what I'm going to do. And then um, if you were writing a letter to complain about a uh, service you received somewhere, you might say, I would like you to address this poor service with the cashier or you know if the product broke i'd like a new product or i'd like a refund of my money you, you tell them what you want them to do for you or what you need them to do for you or what you're going to do for them um if you were writing a cover letter for a job you might say you know your first line would be i'm writing to share with you my qualifications for this position and then you would share your qualifications you know and then you have a closing thank you again for the invitation you know, I look forward to this and a thank you letter. Thank you again for your gift. I plan on wearing this shirt to my next meeting or my first day of school or, you know, thank you for addressing my concern. I look forward to being back in your, in your store. So that's what that last statement is. And then you're closing and the closing is sincerely you know, thank you again, all my love. There's a, there's a million uh, choices for your closing there. Um, I want to show you, here, I'm gonna stop sharing this and come back to y'all here. I wanna share with you um, a couple of resources this evening. Uh, this is the first one I'm gonna share with you. This little instant spelling dictionary. When I was growing up, my mom had one in the kitchen drawer I received this as a high school graduation gift, 1993. Um, it is a handy little tool. It has uh, spelling in it, but at the back, it has a table of address. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it gives you a title, an address, and a salutation. So the first one is an American ambassador. If you are writing to the American ambassador at the French embassy, right? You're going on a school trip and you want to meet with them while you're there. And it tells you how to address them. So you would say the honorable, the American ambassador, and then the address. And then it says, sir or madam, and then dear Mr. Ambassador or dear Mrs. Ambassador. So it's how to address them. It's a great handy little tool. You can probably find all of this online now. But back before there was Google, there was the Instant Spelling Dictionary. Um, it's still available. You can you can find it, but it, it's it also has a table of complimentary closes. So it's a handy little letter for when uh, letter writing resource there for you for your um, greetings and your closings. And it's fun. They have all kinds of all, all kinds of different people back there. Ambassadors, bishops, cabinet officers, judges, deans of colleges, you know, the Pope, the president, a senator, the vice president, you know, in case you ever need to write letters to any of those folks. Um, so that's a handy, that's a handy writing tool as well. Um, okay. So that's the basics of writing a letter. You've got your greeting, your body, which has three parts, right? And a closing. And then, let's see. Um, I wanted to share some other resources with you. So I'm going to screen share again. Um, 
I don't know if any of you are familiar with the OWL. The OWL is the online writing lab at Purdue University. They have a great uh, resource here. When you log on, let's see here. This is their main, the main page when you go to their website. Um, and then if you click on that, it will take you to a whole um, drop down menu over here. And you can see general writing, research and citation, avoiding plagiarism. Um, they have job search writing. And this, if you go to this drop down menu, it has job search letters very specifically. So you can find um, cover letters, academic cover letters, very specific guidance there. The other thing is that up in the general writing section, they have the um, personal letters. And again, they talk about um, having an introduction, common letter writing conventions, you know, opening salutations, complimentary closings, um, the formatting of the letter, and then let's see. And then they also have the basic business letter. And that's kind of what I was showing y'all earlier, where we have the sender's address, the date, the inside address, that's the recipient's address, the salutation, the body, the closing. Um, there's some more formal things here, enclosures. Like if you were going to send an email, um, you would want to say, and you were sending attachments, you would want to include a list of those attachments. Um, and the typist initials, if somebody is typing your letter for you, um, or you're typing a letter for somebody else, you would include your initials so that they know that it was typed by somebody else. Um, but so all of this information, again, is, is available at the OWL. And if you just search the OWL, it, it's one of the first thing that comes up. And again, it's through Purdue, and it's top-notch um, writing resources for all types of writing, not just letters. Um, so I encourage you to make use of that, um, that resource. And then uh, going back to, I want to show you guys one other thing on the letters. Okay, so this letter here, that would be the typed letter. Um, when you're sending a letter, you should keep your font consistent through the whole document. I love fonts. My background is in graphic design and marketing. I have tons of fonts on my computer. I love them. It's a weakness. Um, but you should really stick with basic straightforward um, fonts that are easy to read. You don't want a font, if you want your letter to look handwritten, handwrite it. Don't use a handwriting font. Um, they're often not as easy to read once they're printed as they are on the screen. Um, there's a lot of thought about uh, serif versus sans serif fonts. This one's a serif font, it has these little Oh, sorry, I'm not, let me share it again. Um, this is a serif font. It has the little ends on all the letters. A sans serif font doesn't. Um, there are some really nice sans serif fonts out there. I mean, even just Arial is, is, a, is a fine font to use um, for a letter. If it's a business letter, I, I would use something a little bit more formal, but keep it consistent through the whole document. Just like in your email, if you, unless you're emailing your best friend, don't use um, emojis, don't use fun colors, don't use fun fonts. Stick with your basic, straightforward fonts and colors um, because they're easy to read and they, they convey your message most clearly. Um, so that's, that's uh, some personal preferences and, and uh, things that I think are, are helpful to know. 
The other thing is that there's lots of reasons to write letters. So I've mentioned a few. Uh, writing to, to, uh, to inquire about a job, writing a cover letter for an application for school. Um, you could write to um, make a complaint or a compliment about a product. You could write to keep a record of something. A lot of times, if you um, if you've been working with somebody on something over the phone, you can follow up with a real quick email. Again, say you know, use your general outline. Why are you writing? I'm writing to follow up on the phone conversation we had. I want to you know just firm up what we've talked about and make sure we're on the same page. And then just hit the bullet points of what you've talked about, you know. Um, and then, you know, again, thank you for your time on the phone and let me know if this isn't what was said in the phone conversation. So it's a good way to, to formalize things, is writing letters. Um, and it's a little, uh, it, it's good for record keeping. You know, the way that we talked about, um, Let's look at this email again. So the way this email has my my name and email address. No, I don't wanna do that. Um, the way that it has the date and the time, the way that it shows exactly who it went to, that is a great way to have a formal record of business you're conducting. And, you know, we think about business and we think, oh, that's like grown up stuff, but it's important to kids too. You know, if you're emailing a teacher, I'd like to get a record of my grades. I'd like to get a record of my assignments that are outstanding. It's a good way to have accountability on both sides of a conversation. Um, and it's a good way to keep a, a record, you know, if, if you want to go to the principal about of your school about a problem you're having with another student and you've emailed the principal each time you've had this this problem, then you have a record or your guidance counselor, then you have a record of the dates and times when you were in touch and that they got these emails and that they were made aware. So it's a it's a good way to keep people in the loop and accountable. So it's not just um, it's not just busy work. The other thing is a lot of our understanding of history is based on letter writing. Um, the letters that the founding fathers wrote back and forth, the letters that, I mean, even recipes that people have shared over the years and, and mailed back and forth. That's how we understand the history of, of food and cooking. Um, People during the war, during wars, when they write, when soldiers would write home and people would write back, you know, that's how we understand a lot of what happened on the front line that that wouldn't otherwise be accounted for. So, you know, your letter writing in taking the time to write out your thoughts and feelings and and daily things and share them with somebody else creates a record of correspondence that builds history. Um, and the knowledge available to the next generation. You know, a lot of, um, when Terry's grandmother died, we had boxes and boxes of letters. And it, it was just amazing to read the things that, you know, um, that they wrote about. She was a young girl during World War II and, and, and she wrote to a lot of the boys that she went to high school with while they were in the war. I mean, not even ones that, it wasn't even romantic, it was just friendships and the letters they wrote back and forth. Um, and pictures they sent, you know, it, nowadays we have a, a digital picture and there's a thousand copies, but um, then there would only be one copy and, and they mailed them back and forth. And so it, it, letter writing is a, is a good way to catalog history and to, to share history with other people. Um, let's see, I had two other resources I wanted to share with y'all. Um, one is not necessarily specific to letters, but it's called the, um, the Little Brown Essential Handbook for Writers. And I got this my freshman year of college. It, um, it has lots of information just about 
about writing well. Um, you know, everything from how to properly use abbreviations to formatting formatting documents to um, staying in the passive or active voice you know how to make your writing more clear so it's a it's a great resource if you're if you're um if you're writing and uh and indispensable and then the other one is called um the elements of style by strunk and white and again it doesn't have anything specific to letter writing but it does have a lot about how to make your writing more clear and concise and um and just lots of good information on how to how to share your thoughts um in a straightforward way and then the owl which i shared with y'all earlier i think that's a um a good resource and a worthwhile link to keep um bookmarked does anybody have any questions All right. Um, well, I have a little assignment if y'all are interested. So I know we've talked about um, emails and the uh, basics of sending an email. And we've talked about, I, I shared with y'all the more formal letter, but another fun way to um, get started letter writing is sending postcards to friends and family. So if y'all would like to send me an email, and I'll give you a little bit more information about that. If you would like to send me an email at the uh, Rise Up Cooperative Office email, then I would, and you've got to, I'll tell you what you need to include in there, in that email in just a second, then I will send you some actual postcards and postcard stamps so that you can try out letter writing, okay? So you're gonna email me, at the rise up office email okay and i will show that to you guys again <sighs> alice has stuck it in the chat for you oh thank you so it's right here office at riseupcooperative.org all right and then you need to be sure to put in the subject line letter writing workshop and that subject line is important when you're sending an email. Um, a lot of times, so this is the office email, right? So somebody's going to get that. It's a general mailbox. They're going to get all kinds of emails there. And you want to make sure that your email gets to the right person, right? So you're going to write letter writing workshops so that it can just get forwarded to me. If you put your name, well, then it's just going to get in with the general stuff and somebody's going to have to sort it out. So you want to be sure to include letter writing workshop. And then you can write me a brief email. So do you guys remember the, the outline we talked about earlier? The greeting. So that's like the, hello. Hi, Miss Danielle. The body. Why are you writing to me? I'm writing to you because I'd like you to send me postcards and stamps. The action. Here's my address so that you can send me postcards and stamps. And the closing, thank you, Miss Danielle, for sending me postcards and stamps. <laughs> and then your name. Or you can, I mean, you can, you can write me a whole letter if you want. That's fine. But that's just practice using that general, um, that general body, the why you're writing, the what you want the person to do for you or what you need the person to do for you. And then a closing. All right. All right. So I didn't take quite 45 minutes. If anybody has any questions or wants to talk about letter writing, specific questions or pointers, I'd be glad to answer as I can or point you to um, more resources. Can you talk very briefly maybe about why spelling is important and the use of proper words, like not using um, sure. what I'm talking about? Okay, so 
So I don't know what grade level everybody's writing at, but when you write formally, it's important that you spell correctly. I mean, just basic things like if you, you know, those words that sound alike, but are spelled different. It, um, I can't think of one right now. Um, write and write. If I R-I-G-H-T a letter versus W-R-I-T-E a letter, it's, it's clarity. It makes it easier for the person you're writing to. Now, a lot of times we have spell check, and so we just assume that the computer is going to catch all of our all of our spelling errors. But when words, oh, excuse me, are spelled correctly but used incorrectly, then they're it doesn't catch them. So it's important to read, to proofread, always everything. I mean, I'd say proofread your texts, but I know that's probably asking a lot, right? Um, but so it, it's clear communication, you know, it's, it's important to always use the most clear, concise language in sharing your ideas because you want people to hear your ideas and share your ideas, you know? So that's important. And a lot of formal writing, you try to avoid using contractions. So like don't, won't, were, you wanna spell those out. Do not, cannot, will not, we are, we are not, not we aren't. Um, so just for precision and clarity, those things are important. Just like not using emojis in formal writing. You know, it's fun to do with friends and make little picture stories. I, I, I love some emoji, but it's just not, it's not the uh, most formal way. And the other thing is too, um, there might be a, a, a word or a phrase that you use, that you use with your friends that has a different meaning someplace else. When we first moved here, somebody said, I was with a group of people and they were talking about working together on a project. And somebody said, will you bring plates? And the lady said, I don't care to. And I was like, wow, that was forward. I, I would just say, I can't, or not this time, or I don't have them. And here she meant she didn't mind to bring plates. She was not bothered by being asked to bring plates. So you, you want to try to avoid slang that might have one meaning to you and your group of friends, to another, you know, another person of another age. I mean, there are lots of things that I, I'm sure I would, I would give away my age if I, I mean, I, you guys already know I'm old, but there are lots of things that were, you know, cool to say when I was a kid that y'all would be like, what does that even mean? And there are lots of things that y'all say, I'm sure to each other that I would be like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. And if you've ever gone out looking for the meanings of, of slang things, they can have all kinds of meanings, maybe not the one you intended. So it's best to use more formal language when you're writing a letter, unless you're writing to your best friend. Writing to your grandma, use formal language. Writing to a business to complain or compliment, use formal language. Writing to your best friend, emojis, multicolored, fancy text, go for it. But history will judge that someday. And you might have mentioned this earlier and I might've missed it, but why is it important to be formal? Will it, what kind of impression will it give about us if we are using slang and emojis to write to a business or another formal type letter? Well, I, I think that, I think there are probably some Sometimes paying attention to good manners is good manners. And I think paying attention to formal writing is, is called for because you don't know your audience. And so mm -hmm. when you stick to a, a format and a set of rules that are kind of generally accepted, you're going to be able to communicate with the widest audience. 
and you don't know who's on the other end of that. I mean, you could be sending a job application to a corporation and it could be a, a, a new recruit receptionist who's seeing the letter or it could be it could be the CEO's personal assistant who's who's worked for her for 20 years and you know if it doesn't match the format she's used to it's not gonna go any further so so those standards and those protocols are like the best manners and they might be formal and a little uncomfortable but they help to convey your message to the broadest audience and and there's a time for you to shine through in a in an in a job search or in a college application process or in in dealing with a business but it's not in the format of your writing because you want that to be accessible to as many people on the other end as as possible i agree does that make sense it's like a convention, you know, like when you look at a, a recipe, you usually have the um, the ingredients listed first and then the steps and the ingredients are usually listed either in the order they go in in the recipe or they're listed in the um, like the dry goods and then the wet goods or the wet goods and the dry goods and some sort there's some sort of order and they and they use the same. They're either all in tablespoons and cups or they're all in volume measures because it's it's ease of use for the person on the other end that's that's what you're considering is not who i mean there are lots of ways to convey your personality in a letter but you want to consider your audience as well as yourself when you're writing a letter a form of respect and appreciation toward the person that you're writing toward is what it it shows as well, mm -hmm. kind of, you care. Yes, you've considered them. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I wanted to show you guys one more thing. Let's see if I can figure this one out. Okay, here we go. While she's pulling that up, why don't you guys think of a, a question or two to ask her? So when you go into Google Docs, there's templates. And um, there are letter writing templates. So you can, mm, let's see, I gotta move y'all so I can get to the scroll bar here. So there are, there are different types of letters. Um, there's just a general letter, a business letter, um, an informal letter. So there are lots of, don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Um, there are lots of templates out there for letter writing and lots of places to get free um, templates. Uh, Microsoft, their suite of Word has templates in it. Um, Google has templates in it. You can find them on websites like uh, Teachers Pay Teachers. There are free templates there for letter writing. Um, the owl had lots of, of letter writing templates in it. So don't feel overwhelmed um, in writing a letter. There's lots of, of, um, of templates. And I don't know in your writing at for school, if you guys talk about it, but outlining is a great way to get started. And you know, use even if you just make like yourself a little chart, why am I writing? And then you write why. And then what action do you want? And write that. And then closing and write, you know, a point you want to make there and then fill that in. Don't feel like you have to, to reinvent the letter every time you write it. You know, I, I can remember as a kid writing thank you notes at birthdays and Christmases and other occasions and feeling like I was writing the same letter a thousand times. That's okay. If it conveys the message, thank you. I got, I, I received the thing you sent. I appreciate it and I will use it well, then that's what matters. You don't have to feel like, especially when you're like applying for a job and you're writing the same, I mean, you should tailor the letter to the job, but don't feel like you have to have completely original thoughts for every letter you write. You're gonna repeat yourself. 
Any questions? Does anybody need um, her, Ms. Danielle, to go over really quickly what the assignment was again? Or did you write it down or do you remember it? Are you good with that if you're wanting to do it? You're good? One of you, two of you? Okay, three of okay. you. I think I. All right, awesome. I think I wrote it up, but now I'm sharing the wrong thing. So, you know, hey. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. I typed it up. Send an email. Look at that. Include letter writing workshop in the subject line. Write a brief email and I will send you stationery and postcards. All right. Are we sure we don't have any questions? If you think of a question, you can include it in your email. Look at that, that's a good idea. All right. Well, Ms. Danielle, are you good? I, I'm good. I, all I, right. If there's anything, oh, do you all want me to show you the resources again? The spelling dictionary, instant spelling dictionary, the elements of style and the little brown essential handbook for writers. That's awesome. Those are all good resources and the owl. Don't forget the owl. That one I didn't know about, that's awesome. It's, it's really, really good for all writing. The owl is really helpful if you need help on MLA citations or APA citations. It's the mm -hmm. reference that all like college teachers give you. Nice. Yes. Yes. And, and it used to be they just, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that now like there's a little Google tool or something that you can put it in and it'll format it for you. It used to be that you had to <coughs> fight a typewriter to do that. <laughs> now it, I don't know it, what a typewriter it, is. <laughs> but it, it, it is a great resource for all kinds of writing. I did have one really quick thing um, that I did wanna mention is, I know my kids take advantage of this with each other a lot, but if you ever are worried about whether you're spelling something correctly or your grammar isn't correct or your wordage isn't correct, definitely find somebody, a friend, a family member, a teacher. People are usually more than happy to read over stuff for you and help edit it so that it is your best work. So don't ever think that you're, or don't ever feel alone. And I'm sure there's somebody out there. Um, uh, generally, if nobody in your family, teachers are really good. Like if you have an English paper you're having to turn in, I'm sure like your history teacher or a coach or somebody would be more than happy to help look over that with you and for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's always good to have, I, I find that um, before I ever send something on to have somebody else read it, I read it out loud because sometimes when we think we know what it says and versus when we force ourselves to read the words on the page, you can catch a lot of things just that way. Spelling errors, basic punctuation stuff, it, reading, reading your writing out loud is a great first step um, in rewriting. And, and, and every writer will tell you that there's always rewriting. I mean, if you write something once and think it's it's done, I mean, maybe your thank you letter for grandma, but but everything else you write, it's chances are you're gonna have rewrites. Um, it's it it's good writing to have rewrites. That's a good point. That's very true. I think sometimes we don't we don't learn that necessarily and we feel like it's a criticism to be asked to rewrite something but it's very much just the expectation in writing mm -hmm. you're not a failure if you have to rewrite it for sure yeah and sometimes you know we get something in our head and it makes sense to us but when somebody else reads it it doesn't convey the same way and so if somebody can say to you is this what you mean? And you can go, no, that's not what I mean. And you can make it better Then you can share your ideas more because really it's about sharing ideas and, and, and sharing knowledge. And, and so that's what you want to do. That's why it's important to, to write well. 
Good one point. of my um, English teachers in the past said that the third draft is always the best draft and that um, you, you, you can tell when you have turned in your third draft to your third draft because your third draft often has less mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Third time's the charm. That's awesome. Indeed. All right, well, I'm going to in just a minute stop recording because if nobody has any questions or any more comments or anything else to add, it doesn't have to be just questions. If you have a comment like Katie has shared, you're welcome to. But if not, I want to wish you guys happy holidays and Merry Christmas and remind you that we are not meeting for the next two weeks because of Christmas and New Year's. And I look forward to seeing you guys back after the new year with um, our first one of the new year workshop is communications. So learning about verbal and nonverbal communication and, and different things like that. But I will let everyone go. And I thank you so much, um, Ms. Danielle, for joining us tonight and teaching us on this letter writing. And I will be forwarding Ms. Danielle any emails that I get from you guys, okay? All right, have a great right, and night. And again, if y'all have any questions you think of after tonight about letter writing, just include them in those emails and I'll see what I can do to help you.